Where do UFOs come from? Distant galaxies, wormholes, other planets in our own solar system? Or are they coming from somewhere even closer? Are they coming from Earth? There are strange things flying around in the skies. Are they alien spacecraft? Are they advanced military projects? Experts believe governments around the world may be secretly developing advanced aircraft with alien technology. Join us as we investigate the existence of UFOs from Earth. global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Some UFO sightings cannot be explained and many of them occur near military bases. Is this a coincidence? Or is there a connection? Many ufologists believe that government scientists may be secretly developing advanced aircraft that do not look like anything we have seen before. If this is true, where did the technology come from? Did we develop it ourselves? Or did we acquire it? One of the great theories in the UFO community is that if an alien spacecraft really did crash in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, we now have that technology. In other words, the government, the military, the scientific community all came together in secret and derived all sorts of scientific and technological breakthroughs from the wreckage. The theory of back engineering is if an alien spacecraft were to crash here on Earth, we as human scientists would be able to go out, actually take this technology and figure out how it works. It's been alleged that the integrated uh, circuit chip, uh, night vision goggles, lasers, Kevlar body armor, all sorts of technology derives from a crashed alien spacecraft at Roswell. We then take our technology, which isn't as advanced, and bring it up to that speed, bring it up to that level. Many experts believe that if the government had an alien spaceship fall in their lap, they would jump at the chance to understand its design and keep the entire project a secret. Of course they would try to figure out how it worked. And of course they would try to use that uh, to ensure that the United States had that, that power that technology. It was like the military caught on and thought, maybe we can make these things fly. Maybe instead of two wings and a tail, we can make aircraft that are flying saucers. And so through the late 1940s and the 50s, you saw on the drawing boards of the United States Air Force and the military, these schematics for flying saucer type designs. The incentive is huge. Any nation on Earth acquiring extraterrestrial technology would self-evidently be the dominant force on the planet for the foreseeable future. Unsealed case file, the Avro car. March 1958, Toronto, Canada. Leading aerospace engineer John Frost, working for de Havilland, Canada, pitches a proof of concept test vehicle called the Avro car. Originally conceived as a flying Jeep, it was expected to replace the helicopter in battle over the years, numerous patents have been granted for disc-shaped craft. It's been a sort of holy grail for aeronautical engineers and, and inventors. Can we get something like this to fly? One thing that skeptics love to point to during the 1950s and 1960s is the fact that the military could have been testing flying saucer-type aircraft. They point to one, specifically the Avro car, which was very much a metallic, disc-shaped flying saucer. Sadly, when you look at the footage of this, what you see is, is this, this thing just hovering a few feet above the ground, wobbling around in a really unstable way. Actually, 
disc-shaped object is surprisingly unstable. They couldn't figure out how to make this craft stable enough to actually have some kind of a flight that was worthwhile. They took it out of the hangar, they tried to make it go up, and it just simply didn't. It soon became apparent that the original concept was flawed, and the development of the Avro car was canceled. Now, that might sound odd. I mean, Frisbees seem to go quite well. Who knows? Maybe that wobbly old film footage of the Avro car is, is just disinformation. Maybe they got it to work after all. But if there are other civilizations visiting us that are thousands, if not millions, of years ahead, could we even understand their technology? The question is, did American ingenuity create a flying saucer that actually flew? I mean, ask yourself, if a jet fighter crashed in, I don't know, 300 years ago, could anyone really even figure out what it was, let alone rebuild one? Many UFO enthusiasts believe American aerospace scientists have been working on developing a top secret flying saucer since the 1940s. Publicly, attempts have failed, but behind closed doors, there are rumors that they have successfully designed one of the most advanced vehicles ever known. There are strange things flying around in the skies. Are they alien spacecraft? Are they advanced military projects? Or are they military projects derived from back-engineered alien technology? Unsealed case file, the TR-3. Now, allegedly, even though there's no proof of it yet, this is a triangle-shaped aircraft developed by the military that can fly at great speeds and pretty much perform unlike any other piece of technology that we currently have flying in the sky. Is there a mixture of fact and fiction here? I don't know, but this segues out of the UFO community and into the aviation community, and there's a genuine mystery here. It is rumored to be designed by one of Lockheed Martin's advanced development programs at the infamous Skunk Works in Palmdale, California. Unconfirmed reports say the TR-3 is 600 feet across and capable of 40 G accelerations. But what differentiates it from conventional craft is something called electrogravitic propulsion. Electrogravitics is a invention by T. Townsend Brown where he really aimed to try and figure out a different type of propulsion. Brown is granted a UK patent for a gravitator, a device that he claims can control gravity. What he was trying to do was create an electrical field, then alter the electrical field around an object. He called it electrogravitics, where altering that electrical field would allow a craft to travel at a much faster speed in a much different and more efficient way. If Brown did develop the gravitator, the anti-gravity technology could have changed the world. This really would be the holy grail of propulsion. Uh, this, again, would take us into the realms of science fiction. So it's an area that a lot of people are examining extremely seriously. If the TR-3B does exist, some experts believe it might explain recent high-profile UFO sightings. You've got these black triangle flying craft in the sky. You've got some photographs floating around uh, that really show what essentially could be a very stealth aircraft uh, like piece of technology that the United States could be developing. If this exists, could it be that these things aren't alien, but super secret aviation projects that the government will go to any lengths to hide and cover up? It is possible that they could have back engineered whatever crashed and essentially took that technology that was alien at the time and made it commonplace today. Recently, Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre developed a groundbreaking theory about how we may be able to navigate time and space. Alcubierre's warp bubble theory said that instead of traveling from point A to point B in a straight line, that what you can essentially do is bend space and time. Now, this is the idea that in the early universe, shortly after the Big Bang, 
there was a period of what's called inflation that does seem to be faster than light. So if that's the case, maybe we could somehow construct something that could work off those same principles. Although you wouldn't uh, necessarily achieve speed of light, by compressing what's in front of you and expanding what's behind you, the time that it would take to travel from A to B is exponentially less. Imagine walking through an airport. Well, you can walk at a certain speed, but then imagine when you go on one of those moving walkways, you're going even faster because the thing that you're on is not stationary anymore. And that's kind of like the layperson's explanation for this warp bubble. But if scientists have been able to merge advanced physics theories with rear-engineered alien craft, how have they kept it a secret for so long? You start seeing these mysterious and unknown programs and budgets, and then you try and do investigations on it, and they say, sorry, uh, it doesn't exist. And then in the next year, it's completely gone from the budget. It all muddies the waters. So again, when you get into the world of intelligence and counterintelligence, things get very murky, and it's almost impossible for anyone on the, on the outside to determine what's real and what isn't. So I think the general public and their knowledge about everything is decades behind what is actually going on. Some UFO experts believe mysterious anti-gravity technology may have been reverse engineered from alien UFOs. Although these top secret space vehicles have only scant details, one aircraft allegedly outperforms all the others. Unsealed case file, the TAW-50. The TAW-50 is rumored to be a next generation aircraft that takes over where the TR-3 left off. Now this is supposedly a hypersonic anti-gravity space bomber. I mean, this thing really does sound like something out of Star Wars. Anti-gravity, killer lasers, capable of speeds apparently of Mach 50. Mach 50 is approximately 38,000 miles per hour. To escape Earth's gravity, a spaceship needs to only travel 25,000 miles per hour. I mean, this would be orders of magnitude above anything that even the most uh, uh, forward-thinking people in the aviation community can imagine. Its advanced electromagnetic power generation allegedly uses toroidal fields to push back against gravity, not unlike the propulsion methods that many UFO eyewitnesses have claimed to see. Ufologists believe the TAW-50 is kept at the top secret base south of Area 51, known as S-4, and alleged sightings have appeared all across the Southern California deserts. If it were to be true, I mean, we already have uh, the, the sorts of technology that uh, really, you will see in these sci-fi movies. I mean, if we have this sort of thing, stealth fighters and stealth bombers are, are almost as meaningless as biplanes. Top secret space vehicles like the TAW-50 and the TR-3 are extremely elusive. But recent evidence supports what many ufologists have claimed for years. In mid to late 1991, mysterious and unexplained sonic booms were heard throughout Southern California. It's not uncommon, but there was no explanation for these sonic booms. The shuttle wasn't coming in. Now, the important thing about this, of course, is you can bring to bear the sort of technology that's used when it comes to detecting earthquakes. You can actually start to plot the track. And what it transpired to be was something was moving rapidly across the skies. The military claimed they weren't testing anything. So the question was, what exactly was creating these sonic booms that were heard throughout Southern California? Now, was this a conventional aircraft, or was it alien technology? Uh, again, was this extraterrestrial spacecraft visiting the Earth, or was it the US military having put together something based on recovered alien technology? To this day, aerospace experts cannot explain what was heard in the Southern California skies. But the event ushered in a new era for the UFO community. For the first time, 
the UFO community began to use more scientific tools to try and track these things. And a game of cat and mouse plays itself out between ufologists and between the intelligence community and the military, who, of course, whatever these things are, don't want to tell the rest of us about what's really flying in our skies. But there is one space agency that is open about its interest in advanced propulsion technology. So NASA have made no secret of the fact that the long-term goal must be a star mission. Now, to achieve a star mission, we can't do it with the sorts of rockets that we have nowadays. We need to get into exotic propulsion systems. We need faster than light travel. And to do that, NASA will have to devise technology that turns science fiction into science fact. Space-time itself can be warped. And we see this in, in the real observable universe around a very dense object like a star. So if you can control that, you have a warp drive. A warp drive, if it was ever built, would actually achieve going from point A to point B in a very reasonable amount of time. Maybe not at the speed of light, but something that you and I could travel a vast distance that we couldn't today, but we might tomorrow. Some evidence suggests the government is developing top secret terrestrial spaceships. But how the government maintains such a high level of control and secrecy over technological innovation dates back to the 1950s. The United States is a nation of innovation and thought and uh, progress, science and technology. But occasionally, people who have tried to invent things have come up against the Invention Secrecy Act of 1951. Over 5,000 American patents have been refused, classified, and suppressed under the Invention Secrecy Act. The question is, why? All sorts of things may have applications that the US government wouldn't want getting out, for example, to the Soviets, the Chinese, or to terrorists. But it makes you wonder, what is it that, that they're sitting on? Some of these things have been buried away for decades. What are they working on in secret, behind closed doors? The Invention Secrecy Act is perhaps a way in which advanced technology has been sequestered by the government, the military, and the intelligence community. Some experts believe that the government may have more than national security in mind. They could have very well just turned around and started creating it, started developing it, taking Joe's idea from over here and giving it to the scientists over here, so then they have free reign to do whatever they want with it. Lasers, spaceships, things that we can't even conceive of. We may already have them, but it just may be kept uh, from the media and the public. This is Unsealed, Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Thank you.